ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम वर्सा विलियम्स द हेडलाइंस प्रेजिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद टू एड्रेस द नेशन ऑन द ईव ऑफ द सेवेंटीएथ रिपब्लिक डे दिस इवनिंग इंडिया एंड मॉलडीव अग्री टू कंटिन्यू देर ट्रेडिशनली क्लोज कोऑपरेशन ऑन मैरोटाइम सिक्योरिटी काउंटर टेररिज्म एंड मेडिकल कोऑपरेशन डेली पुलिस अरेस्ट टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर बेस्ड जैश ए मोहम्मद टेररिस्ट सेंटर इश्यूज एडवाइजरी टू रिलीज अंडर ट्रायल प्रिजनर्स हुव सर्व हाफ ऑफ देयर मैक्सिमम पनिशमेंट इसरो सक्सेसफुली लॉन्चेज पीएसएलवी सी फोर्टी फोर कैरियंग कलाम सैट एंड इमेजिंग सैटेलाइट माइक्रोसैट आर फ्रॉम श्री हरिकोटा प्राइम मिनिस्टर कंग्रेचुलेट्स द साइंटिस्ट इन ऑस्ट्रेलियन ओपन टेनिस नोवैक जोकोविच टू टेक ऑन लूका पुई इन द सेकेंड सेमीफाइनल्स इन मेन्स सिंगल्स एट मेलबर्न President Ramnath Kovind will address the nation today on the eve of the 70th Republic Day. The address will be broadcast from 7 p.m. on the entire national network of All India Radio and telecast over all channels of Doordarshan in Hindi followed by the English version. Regional language versions of the president's speech will be broadcast from 9:30 p.m. onwards on their regional networks. Information and Broadcasting Ministry has decided to facilitate access for differently abled people to the president's speech on Doordarshan from 7 p.m. to 7:30 p.m. today. It will also facilitate access to the commentary of the Republic Day Parade tomorrow from 9 a.m. to help them connect meaningfully with this important national day. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa will be the chief guest at the Republic Day Parade. He is the second president of South Africa after Nelson Mandela to be the chief guest at the parade. President Ramaphosa will be accorded a ceremonial welcome at Rashtrapati Bhavan this morning. Later Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Ramaphosa will hold delegation level talks on bilateral, regional and global issues of mutual interest. Both the leaders will also address the Indus South Africa Business Forum today with the objective to grow business ties between the two countries. More from our correspondent Relations between India and South Africa are age old. Father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi is revered in the African nation as he had an important role in the non-violent movement in South Africa. India was at the forefront of the international community in its support to the anti-apartheid movement there. India is among the top 5 trading partners of South Africa. Both countries have close cooperation in the areas of vocational training and capacity building. The visit of South African president will further strengthen and enhance the close partnership between the two countries. With Dipendra Sheila Air News Delhi. India and Maldives have agreed to continue their traditionally close cooperation on issues of maritime security, counterterrorism and medical cooperation. This was decided during the meeting between Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman and her Maldivian counterpart Maria Ahmed Didi in New Delhi yesterday. Both sides held substantive discussions on further strengthening bilateral defence cooperation. Ms Sitharaman reiterated India's commitment to contribute towards capacity building and training requirements of the Maldives National Defence Forces. Ms Didi is in India on an official visit and she will witness the 70th Republic Day parade at Rajpath. She will also visit various Indian defense institutions such as the Indian Maritime Analysis Center in Gurugram and Army Training Command in Shimla. According to an official release, the second round of the India Maldives Defense Cooperation Dialogue was also held yesterday. The Indian delegation was headed by Defence Secretary Sanjay Mitra and Maldivian side was led by Chief of Defence Forces of Maldives Major General Abdullah Shamal. The Delhi police has arrested two alleged Jaish-e Mohammed terrorists of Jammu and Kashmir who were planning to carry out terror strikes in New Delhi during Republic Day celebrations. Briefing reporters in New Delhi DCP special cell Pramod Singh Kushwaha said one of them was arrested with incriminating materials from Rajghat on the intervening night of the 20th and 21st of this month. He was the mastermind of the recent spree of throwing grenades in various parts of Jammu and Kashmir. The other was nabbed from Bandipura in Kashmir. 
उसकी पूछताछ से पता चला कि इसने और इसके एक एसोसिएट ने दिल्ली में पांच जगहों की रेकी की थी जो कि बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लेसेज है जहां पर हैवी फुटबॉल होता है और वहां पर ये जो ऑनगोइंग रिपब्लिक डे सेलिब्रेशन है इस दौरान उनको एक तरह स्ट्राइक कर दी फर्दर इंट्रोगेशन से यह भी पता चला कि रिसेंटली अभी जो श्रीनगर और उसके आसपास ग्रेनेड अटैक्स हुए हैं ये उसका भी मास्टर माइंड Home Minister Rajnath Singh has said the center has issued an advisory to release under trial prisoners who have served half of their maximum punishment provided under the law. He said some state governments have started with the compliance on the advisory. There are about 4 lakh prisoners in jails and out of them about half are under trials. He was speaking at a function at the district court in Lucknow yesterday to administer oath to newly elected office bearers of the Central Bar Association. The minister said the center has abolished nearly 1500 obsolete laws which have lost their efficacy. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates from the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at @AIR News Alerts. You can also log on to our website newsonair.nic.in. The Indian Space Research Organisation successfully launched the PSLV C44 carrying Kalamsat and Microsat R last night at 11:37 precisely. Speaking after the launch, ISRO Chairman Dr. K. Sivan termed the mission as a grand success. He said that the rocket precisely injected the Microsat R in its designated orbit. He said that Kalamsat was a great gift on Republic Day for the nation. Dr. Sivan said. the way this students have made the satellite kalamsat the way the, the perfection with which they made the satellite something amazing we are telling that we are always hand holding others but after seeing this satellite i feel they are going to hold our hands in future our correspondent has filed this report PSLV C44 lighted up the midnight sky with a bright shining moon at the backdrop which was a spectacular sight to those gathered at the Satish Dhawan Space Center Sri Harikota whistles and applause reached a crescendo even as the vehicle took off with a roar into the skies pushed back by orange flames the scientists patted each other even as the successful separation stages took place as per the scheduled time kalamsat is a 10 cm cube weighing 1 kg communication satellite with a life span of 2 months joy air yeah, news reporting from shri harikota prime minister narendra modi has congratulated the space scientists for another successful launch of pslv in a tweet mr modi said with this launch india also becomes the first country to use the fourth stage of a space rocket as an orbital platform for microgravity experiments The 9th National Voters Day will be celebrated across the country today for enhanced participation of citizens in the electoral process. The National Awards for the Best Electoral Practices will be conferred on officers for their outstanding performance in the conduct of elections. President Ramnath Kovind will be the chief guest at the main function being organized by the Election Commission in New Delhi. Our correspondent reports that chief election commissioners and senior officials from Bangladesh, Bhutan, Kazakhstan, Maldives, Russia and Sri Lanka will also grace the occasion. The National Voters Day is celebrated all over the country on January 25th every year since 2011 to mark the Foundation Day of Election Commission of India which was established on 25th of January 1950. The main purpose of the celebration is to encourage and maximize the enrollment especially for the new voters. In view of the upcoming looks of elections, no voter to be left behind has been selected as the theme for the National Voters Day. With Dipendra Kumar, Sanjeev Jasrotia, AIR News, Delhi. In order to provide efficient and time-bound access to the court services to the litigant public, the Department of Justice has decided to deliver e-court services to them through around 2 lakh common service centers (CSCs). To ensure affordability, Department of Justice has decided not to charge any fee from the customers for e-court related services delivered through CSCs. However, towards cost of service, CSCs have been authorized to charge 5 rupees for any of the 23 services available on the court's portal. An official release said so far around 17,000 district and subordinate courts have become IT enabled. In Himachal Pradesh, intense cold is being experienced across the state after recent snowfall and rain. Shimla and its surrounding areas received light snowfall this morning. Weather department has predicted snowfall and rain at a few isolated places of the state today. We have more from our correspondent. 
Famous tourist places of state are reeling under below sub-zero temperatures after recent snowfall. The state capital Shimla, which received 49 cm of snowfall, experienced its coldest night at minus 1.1 degrees Celsius. While tribal district Lahol Spiti's administrative center Kelong continued to be the coldest place in the state at minus 11.8 degrees Celsius. The water supply in district remained frozen due to extreme cold. However, all necessary arrangements have been made by district administration. In Kinnau district, the administration working on war footing to restore electricity and water supply in the district. Sanjeev Sundarial, AIR News, Shimla. The center has decided to renovate and develop around 400 abandoned airstrips across the country to strengthen air connectivity. Disclosing this at Jamshedpur in Jharkhand yesterday, Secretary of Union Civil Aviation Department R. N. Chobe said a drive has been launched to renovate and develop abandoned airstrips to improve air connectivity on the directive of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Mr. Chaube said the Airports Authority of India prepared a memorandum of understanding in this regard and sent it to all the 29 states and seven union territories. The Committee of Administrators of the Board of Control for Cricket in India, BCCI, has lifted the suspension on Hardik Pandya and KL Rahul. Both were suspended from the Indian team for their controversial remarks on women on a TV show. BCCI has also confirmed that Pandya will join the Indian team for the New Zealand series, while Rahul will join the India A squad that is currently playing a series of one-day matches against England Lions in Tiruvananthapuram. In Australian Open Tennis, world number one Serbian tennis star Novak Djokovic will take on world number 28 French Luca Puy in the second semi-finals in men's singles at Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne today. Earlier, second seed Rafael Nadal of Spain ended Greek youngster Stefano Tsitsipas' captivating run to reach his fifth Australian Open final. Nadal defeated the 14th seed Tsitsipas 6 6460 in the first semi final yesterday. The final match will be played on Sunday. Meanwhile, Petra Kvitova from Czech Republic and Naomi Osaka from Japan have reached the Women's Singles Grand Slam finals. They will clash in the final tomorrow. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Valsa. CBI, FIR and the IC, ICI Bank, Videocon loan case is the lead story in most papers this morning. CBI books coaches Dhut over loan fraud headlines in the Sun Times. Coacher, husband booked for taking Chanda from Dhut, quips the Times of India. Mrs. and Mr. Chanda coacher book leads the Indian Express, adding CBI, FIR tears into clean chit she got from board. Stalemate over the new CBI chief is also highlighted across papers. No decision on CBI chief PM's panel to meet again, says the Hindustan Times. No new CBI chief yet. Kharge seeks more info on probables, writes the Times of India. No going back to era of paper ballots, says CEC, focuses the Asian age in a box. The pioneer states CEC puts ballot paper to rest once and for all. Modi to contest from Varanasi again is the lead in the Tribune. The paper adds, BJP sends out clear signal it is in control. Congress goes for kill in UP battle. Priyanka given target to form UP government. The Asian age quotes Rahul adding, Congress may go solo in many states. Government lines up soft for jobless women unorganized labor ahead of the Lok Sabha poll, states the Hindustan Times. Crocodiles removed from seaplane to Unity statue, reports the Indian Express of the Gujarat Forest Department evacuating crocodiles from two ponds on the Sardar Sarovar Dam premises on the Narmada to make way for the seaplane service planned to promote tourism at the Statue of Unity. Try firm on rolling our new DTH tariffs from Feb 1, observes the Hindu, will ensure customers pay only for channels they want, the paper quotes the regulatory body chief. And finally, militant who turns soldier wins the highest peacetime honor. First Kashmiri recipient will be awarded posthumously on the public day for his courage in a valley firefight last November, reports the Hindustan Times. Ashok Chakra for ultra turn soldier Nazir Vani's martyrdom rights a pioneer. With that, it's back to you, Valsa. Thank you, Subhadra. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. President Ramnath Kovin to address the nation on the eve of the 70th Republic Day this evening. India and Maldives agree to continue their traditionally close cooperation on maritime security, counter-terrorism and medical cooperation. Delhi police arrest two Jammu and Kashmir-based Jesha Mohammed terrorists. Center issues advisory to release under trial prisoners who have served half of their maximum punishment. ISRO successfully launches PSLV C-44, carrying Kalamsat and imaging satellite Microsat-R from Sriharikota. Prime Minister congratulates the scientists. 
in Australian Open Tennis, Novak Djokovic to take on Luka Pui in the second semi-finals in men's singles at Melbourne. With that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.